Zedai, you know. And uh, he's also toured, recorded with Billy Preston, Gary Puckett, Frankie Avalon, uh, Phyllis Hyman, Albert Lee. Uh, he's also performed with the Queen's Symphonic Rock Spectacular in London, Bruce in the USA, uh, Legends in Concert, and and several well well unknown other artists. And he's got one of those little sort of black books, you know. I'm going to owe you some money, Nigel. I think. Yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> uh, page thirty-five <laughs> B. People under, you know. So it's like, welcome to the show. And it is a privilege to, at least for this time, to sit in your chair. And it's a big seat to fill. My good friend, Daryl, how are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you so much for all that. It's a, it's a mouthful. Uh, it's funny. I was thinking about that today. Like people ask me, well, what do you do for a living? I'm like, well, <laughs> it's kind of a long story. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of, I don't know if I have attention deficit. <laughs> you know, or, I don't know. I'm a bit schizophrenic with my work uh, adventures. Um, but Oof, I, try, yeah. I try to have fun. And, and fortunately, through my different adventures, it brings me to meeting people like you both, who are both amazing people and amazingly creative. And that's been one of the kind of my great joys. I always say, like, I, I'm really an experience collector, not a money collector, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I guess that served me pretty well over my life. So it's yeah, it's been fun. And the Muscle Shoals adventure. Um, our new album, Muscle Soul Sessions with Charlotta Curbs and the Strays, is, has been a whole really very refreshing thing. Um, Charlotta really wrote most of the material. I contributed here and there, but it's sort of a labor of love for both of us. So we're proud to kind of launch that out to the world as, as soon as it comes out in March. And that's fantastic. That's, that's, is that mid-March, I understand? Yeah, that's what it's slated for. And we have a single coming out, um, Come What May, which is one of the songs off the album. Um, it's, I believe that's going to be February 24th. That's going to be released through uh, Rama Sound Records, which is based in Scandinavia. Well, um, I have to be like, say to everybody, nah, 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 nah. I've actually had the privilege of listening to sort of the final cut and edit. Um, absolutely wonderful. Oh, my goodness me. And... In muscles in fame recording studios in in muscle shoals, Charlotte. What was that like for you? You you know, it just it's like different worlds. Tell me, I mean, where did you? I guess you flew over to what Nashville, Houston. What, what, tell us a little bit about what happened. So you got on the plane, and where did you <laughs> land? And how did you meet up with Daryl? And what did you do? Uh, and what was it like walking into Fame Recording Studios? Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's really an amazing story. Um, I think it was one of the times when Daryl was visiting me in Finland. We sat at my kitchen table and mm -hmm. talking about coming plans, and uh, we were talking about fame and the documentary that was made, oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the Muscle Shoals documentary which I saw twice already. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, D Daryl told me that he's been there for a couple of sessions. And uh, yeah, and then a few months later, <laughs> I found myself sitting on a plane heading to Ooh. Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, so um, Daryl and I met up in Nashville uh, and we spent... Um, three days there just to oh. land and um, get uh, focused uh, on the on the studio session uh, and, uh, and did it, but by the way, did you go to the grand old opry by, by any chance <laughs> yeah tell that story of course. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> yes uh, we were doing great job as a as tourists <laughs> but yeah um obviously Grand Old Opry <laughs> and uh, yes really really great experience and um, um, walking into the fame recording studio uh, was like I, I was crying <laughs> when we turned into the parking lot and uh, 
walking in there was such a, a strong experience for me, like a spiritual experience also, mm -hmm. because um, mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, also like coming back to my roots uh, in a way, uh, because all so many of my musical heroes that has have inspired me to uh, come to where I am today musically uh, mm -hmm. have started uh, out there in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, in that uh, very studio. Uh, so um, yeah, a really so it really was like so <laughs> so it was like visiting a musical temple, and there's not many of them. And, and where music is great, great music has really been made. And so many, you're right, so many famous people have chosen this particular recording studio to record music. And they could have gone anywhere in the world, but the vibe, as I understand it from, in fact, I've been privileged to have some private conversations with Daryl to some degree about his experiences. And it's this... And then like you, both of you, watching the documentary and and realising that the vibe itself, which is this supposed intangible, it's such an easy four-letter word, isn't it, to say, yet it encompasses so much in feelings that is something that sparks the creative wellspring within a musician to perhaps bring and draw out the best in them, and um, one of the, the things I, I've always loved about Daryl, because he has these lovely little sort of cliches, and he says that Muscle Shoals or Fame Studios, recording studios in Alabama, allows you to add the salt and pepper to your music, which is what's really, really important. And that's what gives it that sort of X factor and it stands out. And Daryl, for you, it was how many times was it? Was it your third time or what? Tell us about that. Well, actually, um, I have another friend in Finland, um, my friend Guge, who is a film director, music video director, songwriter. And it was a kind of a similar conversation, actually. I was at his house in Helsinki and we were talking about places to record because he wanted to go do an album. And um, we were just kind of brainstorming and, and we had both seen the film Muscle Shoals and we both loved that film. And I was like, you know, we should see if we can go to Muscle Shoals because I didn't know if it was still open or what the situation was. So we kind of came up with that idea. We contacted them. We set up a deal and, and with same thing. We flew into Nashville and recorded with him for over three days. And I really hit it off with Rodney Hall, who's who owns it now. Rick Hall is, is a gentleman that was featured in the film. Rick was Rodney's father. Mm. Um, he was st still alive when we were there with Gugay, but he had just had some some uh, medical procedures. And then, um, so yeah, so we did that album. It was great, really great experience. Amazing musicians because we use session guys, which is are the same guys that we used on our album, um, our our, oh. our Shark Lot of Curbs album. Oh, right. And um, okay. yeah, and um, so we got to know those guys, Will McFarlane, Peter Levin, keyboards. Yeah. We actually had Rodney on keyboards with us, with Gugge, um, and on oh. a, another another guy down there, and, um, mm -hmm. and Justin, the drummer. Um, so yeah, so that's how that happened. It was kind of the same thing. We were talking about Muscle Souls <laughs> with, with Charlotta, <laughs> and I said, well, you know, actually, I know those guys. I know Rodney, the owner. I'm like, let me contact them. Let's see what we can work out. And uh, we had yeah. some help. Uh, we had a there's a Finnish arts fund to help us out with the, with the recording um, uh, financing, and that was awesome. Um, very supportive in Finland for the arts, which is a huge win for everybody mm -hmm. um, there for sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Yay. so that's kind of how that. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. So yeah. um, we were able to use the studio musicians that are amazing that are on this album the guitar player yeah. had played with bonnie Raitt for several years delbert oh. mcclinton keyboard player peter levin um was with greg allman he, he's currently with the blind boys of alabama um justin mm -hmm. the drummer has played with everybody as well down there so it's just a really it's like a family and we had our our, our ladies um marie and yeah. uh, who were the ladies um Charlotte, uh, yeah. our background singers yeah, Marie and Cindy. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing ladies. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sweethearts and, and just, I mean, just really epic. So, yeah, that was 
like it was it's a spiritual thing down there and they talk about that in the film the rolling stones mick jagger talks mm-hmm. about that mm-hmm. that you go down there and you feel you feel um not only the the um the presence of of that spirit in the room but you also feel the energy of the city and the river and it's very spiritual 